In our number 10 spot today, we have the angler fish. In case you're thinking, hey, this fish looks familiar. Well, that's probably because this is the fish from Finding Nemo that almost ate Marlin and Dory after Dory sang her infamous ballad, Just Keep Swimming. Gosh, now that I've been reminded of it, you better believe that I'm gonna be singing it all night long. This aquatic fish can be found in some of the darkest spots of the ocean. The angler fish has an organ attached to the front of its head. Yes, that's right, an organ. This organ is called an esca. The esca is able to emit light due to a special form of bacteria called bioluminescence. The esca organ is actually the reason that the anglerfish is able to live in the ocean about 3,300 feet, which is 583 feet more than the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. There is supposed to be over 200 species of the anglerfish. That's 200 too many if you ask me. In our ninth spot today, we have Nautilus. This is an ancient mollusk that has been around for 500 million years. In fact, they have been around before Pangaea was even fully formed. Now, originally there were 10,000 different species, but now only a few are left and are at risk of extinction. That's because of us. We are over harvesting them, and on top of that, they are slow at reproducing. They need to be left alone right now because they run the risk of extinction. It's kind of sad once you think about it. Like they survived for hundreds of millions of years and only now start to die thanks to humans. Coming in at number eight, we have the horseshoe crab. Now what's trippy is that despite their name, they are not crabs. In fact, they are more closely related to spiders or scorpions. Isn't that weird? Now these bad boys are considered one of evolution's ultimate survivors. That's because they date back to 450 million years, meaning they survived five mass extinctions. Now these guys can grow anywhere from 18 to 19 inches from head to tail. Males grow a little less in size, only being 14 to 15 inches. Still, that's pretty big. The horseshoe crab consists of three parts. They got a front shell, a back shell, and a tail. Now, you may be looking at this tail and you're like, whoa, what the hell? No, 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 that thing can sting me and then kill me. False, horseshoe crabs, although creepy looking, are harmless, but they do have eyes everywhere. They have 10 in total and that freaks me out. In our seventh spot today, we have the goblin shark. Now, if you've seen my other video on sea creatures, then you know how much I hate this guy. It literally gives me the creeps, and I'll show you why in a second. Now, the goblin shark has actually been declared a living fossil, and that's due to the fact that it was thought to have gone extinct millions of years ago. That was until 1891, when a goblin shark was spotted off the coast of Japan. Researchers realized that the shark was indeed still alive. And in fact, it barely changed over time, hence why it's considered a living fossil. So these creatures can grow 12 feet long and can weigh up to 460 pounds. But in 2000, they found a giant goblin shark that was 20 feet long. So now researchers say that they have no real idea about how big they can truly get. Now, these things have the creepiest looking appearance hence why I'm not the biggest fan of them. Plus they have this weird ligament thing in their jaw that makes it so that they can extend their mouth out and snatch up their prey. Plus their mouths launch out really fast. That's also why its mouth area just looks so creepy. In our sixth spot today we have the lamprey. Has anyone here watched a series of unfortunate events? You know, the movie with Jim Carrey, not the TV show. Well, you know that scene where they're on the lake and the giant leeches start attacking their boat? Well, lamprey look exactly like those giant leeches. These things look like they're a mix between a snake, an eel, and a leech. They can be anywhere from five to 40 inches in length, and they attack fish by sucking the life out of them. They're literally like a vampire. Now, wait until you see their mouth. They have 11 or 12 rows of teeth that wrap around in their mouth like a ring. And once they latch onto their victim, they use a barbed tongue to pierce the fish and then just drain the blood out of them. They also excrete a blood thinner to prevent blood clotting. What's crazy is that these creatures have survived four major extinctions in their 360 million year existence. That is wild. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the frilled shark. Now this is another pretty creepy looking shark. In fact, it doesn't even look like a shark. It looks like an eel mixed with a snake mixed with a shark. But fun fact, these sharks are actually the cousins of the great white shark and the hammerhead shark. 
Now, these bad boys have been around for 80 million years. Pretty insane, right? They live in the dark abyss of the deep sea and have rarely changed over the years. Now, they were given the name of the frilled shark because of the frilly appearance of their gills. They also are kind of similar to snakes because they have hinged jaws that allow them to eat big creatures whole. But you don't need to worry, okay? They live deep in the ocean and they don't really show themselves to humans. In our fourth spot today, we have the Wabagong shark. Again, another shark that doesn't really look like a shark. And that's because this shark has camouflage techniques and it likes to blend in with algae covered rocks or the ocean floor. And they do a good job with it too, with their flattened bodies and speckled patterns on their bodies. Now, these dudes have been around since 11 million years ago. But don't worry, these sharks don't attack. They'll leave you alone if you leave them alone. The only time they have attacked is when a diver got too close or someone accidentally stepped on one. But no fatalities have ever been reported. In our third spot, we have the Greenland shark. This shark is said to be one of the longest lived vertebrae animals. The shark is also said to be one of the world's largest carnivores and one of the most successful predators in the Arctic waters. These massive sharks are about the same size as a great white shark and eat crustaceans along with things that have fallen off of the ice shelf above. Also, apparently these creepy worm-like parasites like to attach themselves to these sharks' eyes and literally eat their eyes out, okay? I think that's scarier than the shark itself. But yeah, the Greenland shark is still alive today. They live for at least 250 years. One of them lived for 400 years. Some may live to be 500. Isn't that crazy? For reference, a great white shark lives for only 70 years. So they got nothing on the Greenland sharks. Coming in at number two, we have a pygmy right whale. Now, these whales have been around for about 23 million years. In fact, they are considered one of the rarest species of whales. Around two million years ago, they were thought to have gone extinct. That was until 2012 when they were rediscovered. Besides that mystery, there's another one, which is scientists don't know where exactly this whale evolved from. There's been much debate over this for a while. What we do know though is that these whales like cool waters, which is what puts them at risk because of climate change. Scientists are worried the rising ocean temperatures will wipe them out for good. And in our number one spot today, we have the whale shark. Here's another name that does not match the creature because this animal is not a whale at all. It's not even a whale shark hybrid. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is the largest shark and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 26 million years. However, now they are endangered. Now when you think of sharks, you think that they love to eat fish and if they get a whiff of blood, they'll just go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't like that at all. In fact, they are filter feeders, meaning they eat plankton, fish eggs, decaying plants, etc. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, an aquarium in Atlanta lets you swim with them. In case that was on your bucket list, there you go. Starting off this countdown in no order, we have the Mosasaurus. This sea creature was alive back during the Cretaceous period, which was 145 to 65 million years ago. It was a massive aquatic lizard that grew to around 58 to 59 feet. In fact, they were at the top of the food chain eating everything beneath them. This included sharks, reptiles, and even other Mosasaurus. Yes, they feasted on their own kind. Fossilized remains of this beast were first discovered in the 1700s in the Netherlands. From there, they learned that it inhabited the Atlantic Ocean and adjacent seaways. Fossils have been discovered all around the world though, in North America, South America, Africa, Western Asia, and Antarctica. Next up in our number nine spot today, we have the Goblin Shark. Named because it looks just like the mythical creatures and perhaps just like the HP Gringotts bank employees, but in fish form, the Goblin Shark has been swimming in the deepest parts of the sea for over 100 million years, most known to be found near Japan. The goblin shark has a long snout, which is a kind of antenna, which makes it capable of sensing the minute electric fields being sent out by prey nearby. They can grow to be 12 feet long and weigh up to 460 pounds. Wow. Their fang-like teeth allows them to snap
snap up their prey and devour it. At this point, scientists don't know too much about their behavior. However, they have concluded that they live a pretty solitary life. Next up in our number eight spot, we have the harp sponge, also known as the Chondrocladia lyra. I have to say, this sea creature is actually so satisfying to look at for some reason. Anyone else get me? It literally looks like a harp, which makes it so hard to believe that it is a living creature. This sponge-like creature is actually known for its carnivorous appetite. It actually has Velcro-like hooks on the external part of its body, and they trap copepods and other small crustaceans. They then break down its prey until it's able to be absorbed through its pores. So it sucks you in with its Velcro-like body parts and proceeds to eat you. In our seventh spot today, we have the vampire squid. Yes, a real underwater vampire. Despite its name, the vampire squid is actually neither a squid nor an octopus. Scientists have separated it into its own group, even though it is quite similar with eight arms and two tentacles. The vampire squid can grow to around 12 inches in length. Its body varies from completely jet black to red. Its name comes from its dark color, and its skin kind of resembles a cape as its skin is connected to its arms. Fun fact, if one of its arms were to be removed by, say, a predator, then it can regenerate and grow back. That's pretty cool. Coming up in our sixth spot today, we have the barrel eye fish. Okay, not going to lie, this fish looks like it's from another planet, let alone a parallel universe. It basically looks like it had a run in with the company that makes those glow in the dark bracelets. And my inner 90s baby is super happy to see this. Do kids these days still use glow in the dark bracelets? Please let me know in the comment section below. The barrel eye fish is a deep sea fish, also known as a spook fish, and it got its name because it has barrel shaped eyes with green lenses. They are known to have large fins, and they're also known to have a transparent head that fills with fluid. Before 2009, scientists actually believed that they could only look up, but they have since observed that the fish can rotate its eyes forward when it's eating. That's pretty cool. The barrel eye fish is usually seen looking like it's lying down motionless. According to researchers, their transparent heads and green pigmented eyes help in filtering out the sunlight reaching their deep sea habitat. They have also been found to be in the North Pacific waters and near Baja, California and Japan. In our fifth spot today, we have the flapjack octopus. Gosh, why is it named this? Now I'm going to have to eat pancakes after this video. As delicious as its name sounds, its look instantly makes you say, better not. In fact, it looks more like a cute Pokemon, if anything, so I'm going to choose to believe that it's really a creature from my universe where Pokemon really exist and it somehow got into our universe through some underwater portal. The flapjack octopus is a part of the umbrella octopus family known for their umbrella-like appearance during any kind of movement. It lives between 500 to 1,500 meters below the sea. They are mostly found in the Eastern Pacific Ocean with some sightings in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. They don't have a long lifespan, usually living for 1.5 to 2.5 years. The flapjack octopus eats prawns, lobsters, crayfish, shrimp, krill, crabs, to name a few. When it's ready to hunt, it flattens out its body in order to appear less threatening. The flapjack is another creature found in Finding Nemo, one of Nemo's, you know, class friends named Pearl. In our fourth spot today, we have the Dumbo octopus. As you can probably guess, its nickname came from the fact that its ears are as cute as the famous Disney character, Dumbo. The Dumbo octopus, like the flapjack, is another umbrella octopus, and it can live down to the depths of 13,100 feet, and some scientists speculate even deeper. They are inkless, unlike a lot of their cousins, and they move by slowly flapping their ears, and they use their arms to steer. Fun fact about female Dumbo octopuses, they can actually store sperm for long periods of time after mating with a male. This is to their advantage, of course, because they can then transfer sperm to the most developed eggs when it is the right time for reproducing. No comment, <laughs> but that sounds great. <laughs> they eat pelagic invertebrates that swim above the seafloor, and as such, they spend much of their lives suspended above the seafloor. In our third spot today, we have gulper eels. The gulper eel is quite terrifying to look at, and it is definitely the kind of fish that makes me slightly terrified to go swimming in the ocean. But I don't have to worry because they are in the deep sea. I only have to worry about, you know, sharks, stingrays, and 
stepping on a jellyfish. The golfer eel has a very distinctive trait. It has a very large mouth, and it tends to snap at its prey similar to a snake. Its large mouth and its ability to open wide allows it to eat creatures you would otherwise assume would be too big for it to eat. It has a very skinny body, long and snake-like. They are about two to three feet in length, and they live in the deep, deep sea ranging from 1,600 to almost 10,000 feet below the surface. Known to be the fish of your nightmares, and of course I don't disagree with this. In our second spot today, we have the pelican flounder. This fish is actually found in the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans. The pelican flounder makes itself as flat as possible to counter the pressure levels of the deep sea. Scientists haven't been able to observe this fish much in its natural habitat and so therefore nothing much is known. But we do know that the pelican larva, however, looks like it is from another dimension and it has a very alien-like sort of appearance. The larva are transparent and become brown as they grow into their adult form. They grow to be about 38 centimeters in length. Save the best till last. In our first spot today, we have the blobfish. Most people say that this is the ugliest fish in the world, but personally, I think the goblin shark is worse. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Which fish is uglier? The blobfish, the goblin shark, or let's throw in the angler fish too, because that's another gross one. The blobfish has been described to look like a half melted human reduced to nothing more than a bubble. That is the perfect description of it. It also kind of reminds me of slime, but living. This fish can be found living in the deep sea of the coast of Australia and New Zealand. It is said to be residing in about 2,000 and 3,900 feet deep. Apparently the only reason it looks like the way that it does is because of depressurization damage done while bringing the animal to the surface. It looks like a fairly normal fish though at the bottom of the ocean. The blobfish has an extremely long lifespan of 130 years. It weighs about 20 pounds and it's about 12 inches long. They have no teeth, no skeleton, and they don't spend much energy moving around. So basically their name is quite fitting. Starting off this countdown, we have coelacanth. What's confusing about these fish isn't their name. It's the fact that everyone thought that they went extinct alongside the dinosaurs. Then millions of years later, they were rediscovered. These dudes have the most famous comeback story of all time. So in the 19th century, scientists discovered a fossil of this fish. This fossil was over 410 million years old. They thought that they went extinct over 66 million years ago. So it shocked scientists in 1938 when they were rediscovered off of the coast of South Africa. But they did have have some new features thanks to evolution. Now the fish has four fins that move more like limbs than fins. Theory goes that maybe they were going to become a land dwelling amphibian and then they kind of just changed their mind. I know that's not how evolution works, but it's the easiest way to describe it. So yeah, here's a creature that used to rule the world alongside dinosaurs. In our ninth spot today, we have Liviatin. Now this dude was in direct competition with the Megalodon. They were around 57 feet in length and weighed around 100 thousand pounds. So yeah, they were pretty hefty guys. Not only that, but they had incredibly large teeth. Their teeth reached over a foot in length. This earned them the title of having the largest known biting teeth of any animal. But they died out between 3.6 and 2.6 million years ago. Just like the Meg, these creatures struggled to adapt to climate change, and they suffered losing their primary prey, which was small to medium-sized whales. If this creature was still around today, I couldn't imagine what the ocean would be like. You'd never catch me swimming in it, that's for sure. In our eighth spot today, we have the giant oarfish. The oarfish is the world's longest bone fish. They can be up to 56 feet, which is 17 meters in length, and they can weigh about 600 pounds, which is 270 kilograms. They also look pretty weird. Like they look like a cross between an eel and a fish, but they have bright silvery skin with bright red spikes running down its back. Back in the 1860s, two men were gathering seaweed on the coast of Bermuda when this creature washed up on the rocks. They immediately got scared and thought it was a nasty sea serpent, so they killed it. Later, it was discovered to only be an oarfish. In our seventh spot, we have Ichthyosaur. Between 1976 and 1990, scientists unearthed the largest Ichthyosaur tooth ever found. The width of this tooth root was twice as large as any aquatic reptile known. It had a diameter of 60 
millimeters, which is 2.4 inches. This makes it the thickest ichthyosaur tooth found so far. Then in 2018, paleontologists discovered a three foot jaw segment that belonged to this creature. Then they started to piece together the fossil fragments of this creature and concluded that this animal could have grown to 85 feet in size, bigger than they originally thought this creature was. Now, these creatures were interesting. They roamed the oceans about 200 million years ago and had body shapes kind of similar to dolphins. It's said that they vanished about 25 million years before the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. In our sixth spot today, we have the Shastasaurus. Now, this is the biggest known ichthyosaur. In fact, to this day, this creature is the largest marine reptile that has yet been found. Now, I say yet to be found because the oceans are massive, okay? Who knows what else is out there lurking that we haven't discovered yet? There's still so much to be discovered. Anyways, turns out that these bad boys lived in Canada. Woo, my home country. And they were about 69 feet in length or 21 meters. But some researchers have proposed that they were even bigger, and that's based on their partial fossils. So we really don't know their true size. I mean, it's said that the modern blue whale was the largest animal that ever lived, but paleontologists believe that these guys were even bigger based on their fossil records. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the whale shark. Now don't be fooled, okay? This isn't a mix between a whale and a shark. It's not a whale shark hybrid. It's not even a whale, okay? But it is a shark. The only reason it's called a whale shark is because of its size. It currently holds many records for size in the animal kingdom. It is one of the largest sharks and largest living non-mammalian creature. And it's been around for at least 28 million years. It is said to be 65 feet in length and it weighs about 75,000 pounds. Now, when you think of sharks, you might think that they love to eat fish, you know? And that when they get a whiff of blood, they'll go crazy. Well, whale sharks aren't even like that at all. In fact, they're filter feeders, meaning that they eat plankton, fish eggs, and kill decaying plants, all that kind of stuff. So these sharks are pretty harmless. In fact, since it is a filter feeder, it has the ability to sift through over 1,500 gallons of water in an hour as part of its feeding ritual. In our fourth spot today, we have Leedsichthys. The Leedsichthys lived in the oceans during the Middle Jurassic period. It was all over the place in size. It could grow anywhere from 30 feet to 100 feet. So that's a pretty drastic size difference. But to this day, it is considered the largest ray-finned fish to ever swim on Earth. In fact, they were named after paleontologist Alfred Nicholson Leeds, who made important finds of the remains in 1889. Now, these dudes are pretty weird looking creatures. They look like an old whale mixed with a fish. Like, it's really strange. They also have long pectoral fins and a tall tail fin. And although they look big and bad, they mainly eat zooplankton. In our third spot today, we have Basilosaurus. The Basilosaurus, whose name literally means King Lizard, lived around 41.3 to 33.9 million years ago. At first, they thought it was a reptile. But after scientists studied it more, they realized that it was indeed a marine mammal. So its name is very misleading because it's actually a whale. But it's weird, like it has a long eel-like body. It also has huge rows of teeth and it chewed its food, whereas whales kind of just swallow stuff whole. It was at the top of the food chain, so it likely fed on sharks and large fish, among other marine mammals. This guy measures up to be about 49 to 66 feet in length, and that's 15 to 20 meters. In our second spot, we have the fin whale. The fin whale is said to be the second largest animal to ever live in the entire history of Earth. It was about 85 feet in length, which is 26 meters, and weighed about 80 tons. But even though they are massive, they are not predatory. In fact, they are totally harmless to people. They are filter feeders, so they eat like tiny krill and stuff like that. Like other whales, these had a white underside with a dark backside. They also live all around the world. They live in every ocean, except parts of the Arctic where it's just covered in ice, and they can travel great distances while munching on relatively little food. As a result, they can live for nearly 150 years. 
And in our number one spot today, we have the blue whales. Now, it seems hard to believe, but blue whales are significantly larger than megalodons. The largest blue whale weighed about 418,000 pounds, which is more than 200 tons. Average blue whales, on the other hand, weigh a bit more than 100 tons, whereas the megalodon weighed only 50 tons. So they got nothing on the blue whales. Not only that, but even blue whale dwarfs reached 110 feet, which is 34 meters, and weighed about 200 tons. That's more than twice the size of the largest meg. Isn't that crazy? But the meg and the blue whale never met. The earliest fossils of blue whales date back to roughly 1.5 million years ago. That's about a million years after the megalodon is believed to have been around. Mm -hmm. 